So I think we'll get started now. Um, we've waited four minutes. So welcome everybody to the Shape of Work uh, webinar powered by Spring Verify. As you're aware, um, you might not be aware also. Uh, Spring Verify is a background verification service by Springworks. Um, and today we are going to be talking about the fundamentals of background verification. We're going to discuss what, why, and how of background verification. And uh, I'll also take you through uh, quickly what features we have and how you can automate your background verification. And we'll understand reports and everything else. And I'm sure you have all come here with a bunch of questions. So we answer those as well and you know make this as um, interactive and as um, valuable as possible for all of you. So um, this is today's agenda. So we're going to be discussing all of these. We're going to understand the what, why, who, what is the planning, how to plan checks, how to choose a background verification service provider, what is the validity of a check and how frequently you should be doing background verification. Can you automate uh, BGD and understanding a report and how to make a great impression with the candidate? At this point, I would like to understand what your goal um, for attending this webinar is. So, um, Avash, can you please launch that poll? So, I'd like to understand exactly what you're here for. Are you really new? Uh, to background verification? Are you just here to understand how you can make it more effective? What exactly are you here for? Okay, it looks like a good mix of all three. Amazing. So I think we have like almost an equal mix of all kinds of people here today. So I'll try to make this as basic as well as as valuable to the rest of you also as possible. So I think we can get started at this point. So let's understand what, why and who of background verification first. So background verification is the verification of the accuracy of the information provided. Like the um, definition says, it's you can only verify the information that has been provided by an individual or an entity. So by this, I mean that consent is very, very important uh, without the consent of either the entity or the individual that you're verifying, um, you cannot proceed with the verification of their details. And why you should do it is because it ensures safety and eliminates risk safety of the people working in your organization, safety of the assets, maybe physical or virtual, and to just generally ensure that the people, the assets, and all your data is safe. So you are going to be doing this as a precautionary measure, and uh, that's why you should be doing this. And who can be verified um, when background verification is being done? You can verify individual as well as entities. When I say individuals, we are talking about candidates, employees, where we can verify contractors, consultants, freelancers, anybody that you basically work with, even partners. So you can verify any individual who has an ID and who wants to work with you. Um, and when it comes to entities, uh, as a business, uh, you might be tying up with certain companies, maybe by outsourcing a part of your work or maybe using their services for your office. So in this case, when you have to uh, verify an entity. Uh, for entities, there are like a small set of checks that can be done, uh, such as you can check their credit score. So you can understand their credit check by uh, you know, knowing whether they're in debt, whether they have a habit of paying late, um, ma making late payments and all of that. Apart from those, you can also check uh, their GST, FSCCI certificates, and um, shops and establishment certifications. And if it's a proprietary business, then you can also do an ID check on them because proprietary belongs to one person. So you can check their ID as well. So these are the limited set of checks you can do for entities. Like if you want to verify a company um, as a whole instead of an individual. So for the rest of the 
a discussion from here. I'm going to keep it specific to individual verification because this is all there is about entity verification. So going forward, we're going to be understanding how you can deep dive into individual verification um, in background verification. So Navi, next we're understanding planning of checks, which set of checks for whom. So um, in the industry terminology, we call this package. So a package is a set of um, you know, background verification checks that you select for a person. So this is uh, dependent on multiple factors. Um, so a package can depend on the background of the person. It can depend on the nature of work and the industry that they're being hired, hired into. So for example, when I say background, uh, there are blue collared and white collar jobs. So the background of each of these individuals is very different. So keeping this in mind, you will select exactly which check is relevant for who. The nature of work, of course, if it involves, uh, you know, if they're into a fintech company and they're going to be having access to uh, very sensitive financial data of customers, or they're a customer facing, um, they're in a customer facing role and uh, they're meeting customers every day or they're, you know, visiting their homes. So uh, then the checks will differ based on that. And of course, the industry that they're being hired, hired into. So banking industry and fintech industry, um, anything related to money and sensitive information, um, these industries will have more um, rigid checks than the rest of it. So to understand this better and uh, to help you plan your packages and checks uh, for individuals in future, so I'll take you through two scenarios for your understanding of how you need to plan checks. So let's look at scenario one. So in scenario one, we are uh, considering that a candidate has applied for a product manager role and in a fintech firm. So for a product manager, ideally, uh, you know, there will be certain criteria in their job description that says they should be maybe educated um, in the product management um, specific domain. So they might claim that they have done a course on product management or done a diploma of product management from IAMB or any other certain university. And uh, they would also claim that they have one or two years of experience from a certain company, or they might have interned with another company to gain the experience that needed for the role that they're applying for. So in this, ideally, the package would be ID checks, uh, code checks are pretty basic. We do it for everybody because we just need to validate that this person really is representing the person that they say they are. And um, credit check, because we have considered a FinTech firm, so we need them to be clean in terms of money, um, to not uh, be desperate by, you know, if we can understand these, um, you know, psychology of a person by understanding whether they're paying their fees on time, you know, making their credit card bills uh, payment on time, are they spending too much, is their lifestyle, lifestyle about their budget and stuff like that. So these kind of information we get to know through a quick credit check. Address, of course, just to, because we're, you are gonna be sharing a lot of assets, like you might be sending them a laptop, um, you might be, you know, giving them a setup of office maybe. So you need to understand exactly where they are to retrieve it in case they're leaving and stuff. And uh, reference education and employment are very, very important for um, a person like this because um, education, of course, to validate whether they really have the education they need to be, uh, you know, doing justice for this role. Employment and reference to understand whether they have the experience um, that is required to fulfill this role. So this is scenario number one for someone in this kind of role. The, this is how you would plan the package. Um, when we move to scenario two, uh, we are considering a delivery partner for, for a food delivery app, maybe. So let's consider Swiggy or Zomato. Uh, there are multiple delivery partners for them, like there are hundreds of them. And um, all of these people are wearing t-shirts that say Swiggy Zomato and representing these organizations um, in their name and meeting customers every day. And they know, you know, they have access to their house address and location and everything. So it's very important for these companies to uh, you know, be very careful who they hire. So in this, uh, the ideal package would be ID check, which is basic, but driver's license most importantly, because we see these 
uh, people on two wheelers every day on the roads. They're moving around the entire city. So it's important that we uh, know that they have a driver's license to be riding around. Um, address check, uh, court check, credit check as well, and active crime monitoring. This is an additional one. See here, we don't give that much importance to education um, because, you know, for somebody like a delivery partner, they are not very, very em emphasized on how qualified they are. Um, they, I think their qualification is something like a 10th pass, maybe, but the, the real criteria is for them to know how to read and write English. So active crime monitoring is something that's given more importance here because uh, we, because of the level of, um, you know, um, involvement they have in the actual touch points of these customers that we need to ensure they're safe people that are meeting these customers every day representing their brand. So this is how you will plan your checks um, depending on the role, depending on which industry and depending on the background of the people that you're hiring. The same applies to your partners. The same applies to uh, even freelancers and anybody else, any other stakeholders of the company that you're hiring. So that's about how to plan checks. Now we're going to move to how to choose a background verification service provider. And um, at this point, I want to uh, understand whether you do it yourself or you usually use a service provider for background verification. Oh, it's surprising most of you are actually doing it yourself. Okay, great. Um, I see almost 70% of you are doing it yourself. And just 20% 20, 20 of you are using a service provider. So um, in one of the meetups when I met a few HRs last time, uh, we discussed exactly how they do uh, background verification by themselves. and. This was through reference and you know they they're just hiring based on um maybe common contacts and stuff uh but there's no definite way of verifying exactly uh, who they're taking in so uh, the reason why you should be using a background verification service provider firstly is because uh, you know there is um the sources of data that a service provider uses to verify whether a candidate is safe uh, and whether they are really representing who they are. Um, these sources are you know, based um, on government data and really uh, they, we go into the details of exactly their history and everything. So it makes it so much more accurate and which is why it's important. So I maybe, once you understand how to choose a background education service provider, you will get an idea of how um, you know to go forward with this. So uh, choosing a background verification service provider um, depends on the goals and requirements that you have. So uh, these are some of the examples of what the goals and requirements look like. So whether you want to save your team's time and effort, um, if you have a very small team in your organization, like just three, four of them in the HR department doing the recruitment, the onboarding and everything else by themselves, and you don't want to be spending half your day following up with a service provider, whether background verifications are done or not, then that should be the focal point for you. And faster turnaround time, of course, most of them want this nowadays. And um, yeah, you need to check how fast uh, verifications can be done. And that would be your factor for consideration. Large volume hiring um, is mostly relevant for large organizations that are hiring very, very often, or maybe you know it's an ongoing process for them that there are always people coming on board for them. So at this point, when, when an organization is hiring a lot of people, um, it's important that they are able to give it to an organization that can take the load. And that can, you know, do it in a seamless manner where the involvement of the recruitment team or the HR is minimal. Because hiring so many people and onboarding them is not just about, you know, okay, I've hired them and I've, you know, they're, they're coming on board. It's also about ensuring that their onboarding experience is good. And there are tons of other things to do apart from just verifying them and bringing them on. Board. Mm -hmm. So um, that uh, will be your focus point of when you're evaluating a service provider for large volume hiring. 
global serviceability again is um, as as the term says clearly that um, the service provider has you know uh, serviceability in as many countries and uh, places as possible this is mostly relevant to organizations that have branches across the globe they have people working out of multiple places or it could be a very remote organization it can be completely remote organization with distributed teams where um, there are people from every city and every country and they're all working together for the organization so this will be your goal to consider and these are the questions you will ask when you're evaluating a service provider Compliances, of course, a lot of companies, um, you know, uh, getting an ISO certification and um, as per their compliance, they have to only work with partners who are compliant on certain, um, you know, measures. So that's what you will consider. And of course, integrations. Integrations, uh, lately, I've been seeing that there's a huge benefit um, when you integrate background verification to your existing HRMS or HRIS because you can keep everything in the same place. And if you are working with large volumes of data and want to keep everything in the same place, then of course, integration is something that you need to focus on. Apart from these goals and requirements, I, um, I think there's also uh, customer support and a few other goals that um, I can think of that I haven't mentioned here because you know it changes from organization to organization and um, it depends on the teams. So while choosing a background verification service provider, these are the um, goals or requirements that you will first identify for yourself and then start approaching and evaluating service providers for it. So as per the poll, I can see that um, saving the team's time and effort uh, scores the best here. Most of them want something that can be automated and for the background verification organization to take up and uh, yeah, the second is fastest turnaround time. Simple and easy to use da dashboard is the third one, which is great. There are some people who said none of the above as well. Great. All right. So we'll move on to our next, which is validity of checks and frequency of background verification. When I say validity of checks, uh, some of you might be wondering exactly how long is each of these checks valid for and, you know, whether you should keep doing it frequently or you can do without it. So some most of the uh, organizations do a background verification once when they are onboarding mm -hmm. um, a candidate or a partner or a contractor, whoever it is. But after that, they don't do any more checks. They again, the background verification happens when the employee changes their form. But here I'm going to help you understand how to um, you know, plan this. So when we say validity of checks, um, ID checks have a lifetime validity because once you've checked their identity, uh, there are rare chances of their name changing. Uh, that's if they've changed their name, then they will be changing it on all the documents. So that's a rare case, but otherwise their ID and education pretty much remain the same. Um, so you don't have to keep doing the check on that again and again. But however, um, things like court court record check and um, maybe uh, credit checks might might be uh, might have to be done much more frequently. Um, especially depends on the uh, level of risk in the kind of roles that they're in, and uh, if it's like a high risk role where they have access to a lot of information and stuff. Ideally, at least once in six months is something that you should aim at. You know, redoing the checks for them. Uh, some organizations also, also do drug tests frequently. Um, so that's also something you will redo um, once in a while if you're opting for it. But for something like ID checks, um, it has a lifetime validity. So you can check it once and be rest assured that this is not going to change. Unless, of course, they come to you, um, you know, it'll come to your notice if an employee changes their name or um, other basic details. So that's about the validity of the checks. So now we are going to see how to automate background verification and manage large volume hiring. For this, I'm going to take you through uh, Spring Verify. I'm not, we're not gonna to go too in depth about this, but let's just see the basic features of Spring Verify and how exactly as an HR, you can um, you know, outsource background verification entirely without having to be very, very involved in it. So 
to show you this, I'd like to go through our dashboard. So this is the Spring Verify dashboard. There are, um, there's a password login option. There's also a Google SSO login option. There are multiple login options as well um, for Spring Verify, depending on whatever is convenient for you. And um, this is the first screen you will see. We call this a one view because you get a one view of, uh, you know, the checks, the candidates that are added, the checks that are in progress and what's pending, what are the issues and everything. And of course you get like a quick list of the latest candidates that you've added as well. And um, these are the only four tabs here. We've tried to keep it as simple and basic as possible. So there's an, it's not too complicated. And uh, when you go to candidates, you get to see all the candidates that have been added. And um, here you can see that certain candidates um, have either given a wrong email ID or uh, you know, there's some error in the email ID that they've given and the emails have bounced. So there's a notification here that says the emails have bounced and that they need to be corrected. So all of these are efforts to make um, the turnaround time as fast as possible to be able to complete checks as soon as possible. So um, this is one of the latest features that we launched. And uh, as you can see, there's a list of candidates. Here you can see what the status statuses are. You can filter them based on what the statuses are as well. And um, categories and tags can be something that you can personalize for your organization. So you can add what categories for, for, ex this, for the sake of this example, we have used categories as different roles. For example, human resources team, marketing team, sales team, stuff like that. So in tags, we have mentioned April batch, May batch. So this is something you can customize for yourself while adding the candidate itself. And um, these, this is color coding for each of the checks. As you can see, um, this is form submitted and this is awaiting input. Awaiting input means the candidate is yet to share all their details so we can begin the background verification process. So you, there's, there's no, you, know, you don't have to go into every single candidate to be able to see what's happening here. And once, um, you know, certain checks are complete, like for example, in this, there are seven checks and uh, a lot of them have been closed and some of them have been completed, but as and when at least one check is complete, you will be able to see a report here. Um, so this, we have a real time re report um, feature on Spring Verify. So you don't have to wait for a full fledged report until the very end of the background verification being completed you get to see the report and the results as and when checks are being completed, uh, they happen simultaneously. So um, this is the candidates tab and moving to approved charges. There's, uh, this is the tab where, you know, there are certain uh, additional charges that might come, um, you know, come in when checks are going on. For example, here you can see code, employment or you know uh, even education for that matter of fact so certain uh, checks like education certain universities do ask for additional uh, money in order to share uh, information of this particular candidate so um, that those kind of checks uh, the charges will be displayed here and you can either approve or disapprove and depending on what you decide here we the check will either move forward or it'll be closed so this decision for, is for you to make. There is a auto, uh, there's an auto approve feature as well for this. So in case you don't want any delays from Spring Verify waiting for your approval, um, you can auto approve these charges and you can also set a limit for how much you can auto approve it for. So this is the auto approve tab. And um, then we have the balances and buy. So you can see how much current balance you have, how many, what are the packages you have, how many units of each package you have, everything is available um, here in this tab. So I think now we can look at how to add a candidate. It's very, very basic and simple. Um, you have two options, either to ca add candidate in bulk or to add candidate individually. In bulk would be uploading an Excel sheet uh, with the candidate name, email, and um, other basic details. And um, we have, the AI technology identifies exactly which information is what. So you don't have to put it in the exact same format that we ask for and anything. But the, a set of this information need to be there. Like name and email ID and uh, phone number is mandatory. 
So if that's there, um, AI identifies exactly these tabs are available and takes that information in and adds the candidate by itself. So that's the add candidate in bulk feature. So I'll show you how the add candidate works. So for example, I just type out a name. I'm putting my putting in my own name here. Um, so you just need to type a name and you can type in a number and you have to provide an email ID, although it doesn't say mandatory here, but in case you, know, you want uh, Spring Verify to ask candidate for consent, then you need to provide an email ID. So I'm just gonna say abc at the gmail.com. And now you can see, you can either ask the candidate for consent or you can take a candidate from the consent by yourself and upload it along with this um, candidate's details. So apart from this, um, you employee ID, universal account number, none of this is required. Only if you want to upload these and keep everything in one place, this is an option for you. But otherwise, it's not mandatory to get a background verification started. So um, here you can see the category and tags. Uh, like I mentioned, you can create any kind of categories you like and uh, customize this yourself for your easy understanding of which candidate is for what. And then you will also um, let Spring Verify know whether we have to ask the candidate to fill out the background verification form or you will fill the background verification form on their behalf. So when we say um, you will fill it up, then you have to provide all their IDs and um, you know education information and everything that they need to upload. But if you select ask candidate, then that's it. I think your work is done. You just have to select uh, all right. So uh, we're going to move and see what's the next step. You will select the package. Uh, you will select. So the list of packages here will depend on what packages you have chosen while you are onboarding with Spring Verify. So if you have chosen a package um, only master verifier and maybe um, you know upstart verifier, then you will see only those two here. But if you selected all three or you ha had to add some custom packages as well, you, you will see all of that here based on how many units you have. So based on that, you will select one of the package and you can still customize the package as well. So if you can say, I want to check their Aadhaar, and uh, maybe any one address and let's do like one last employment check and we move to next. So this is a summary of what all checks have been selected and the candidate. And if you still further want to add on some more checks that you didn't see earlier, you can still add them. You can add a court record check here or an education check here. So if you want to add a drug test for this particular candidate, you can do that as well and then move to add candidate. So that's it. Um, a link gets sent to the candidate where the candidate uploads all their details, their basic details, their, um, you know, their ID, uh, scanned copies of all their IDs and all the details that are required to get the background verification process started. But your role ends here. So this is all you need to do. It's a three-step process for you. One is you add candidate that also either through a bulk upload or individually, you select which package and which checks need to be done for them. And the less test you can leave it to the candidate and Spring Verify to take it forward. So here ends your role. Apart from this, um, yeah, you just need to un you know decide whether you want to approve charges or not and uh, what balances are there and just track you know, how many candidates are, have been added and not added. So yeah, we are, we have another poll here. Oh, good nine, 90 plus percent of you say that candidate experience matters, which is great. Okay, some of you do say that it doesn't matter, but I think I have an argument to make on that. Great. So um, these are the basic features of Spring Verify. Apart from this, there are some more features that I'd like to show you. Uh, for example, you can add uh, and manage team members. Why is this not?
Okay. Try this again. Okay, there seems to be some issue with that one. Um, so you can add your team members, you can, um, you know, control how much access they have, um, uh, depending on the candidates and, um, you know, the level of information that they can access and whether they can approve charges or not. So you can control all of that with managed team members here. And another very new feature that we have added is when you go to balances and maybe you want to recharge and add some packages, uh, you can select uh, how much you want to recharge, which package you want to add and move to next. And there is a request payment feature here. So you don't have to uh, break your head trying to get the payment done. So this feature allows for you to select any of your finance team members um, in your organization and just send this payment link to them and give them a due date by when this needs to be done. So uh, without having access to any of the candidate information or any of this data on, on the Spring Verify account, they will be able to make payment um, for how much of a package you have requested uh, on Spring Verify. So this is one of the latest features we have. And uh, we also have integrations. So in case you're using, these are our current integrations and um, you know, there are some that are coming soon. These are the ones that are coming soon. But uh, Zoho Recruit, Recruity, Greenhouse, Le Lever, and Razorpay X Payroll are already um, available integrations that you can easily use. Um, you can integrate Spring Verify to those platforms and have all your data in the same space. So this is another feature you have on Spring Verify. And yeah, you can control exactly um, you know, for better safety reasons, there is a setting here um, where you can choose to um, enable a pa password expiry and uh, say every 15 to 60 days, somebody needs to, anybody who has access to Spring Verify, we should be able to, um, should, should be changing their password very often. So these are some of the security settings. The last feature I want to show you is the communication customization here. So in order for you to be able to uh, communicate to your candidates in the way you want to, like, you know, I think the first um, um, communication that goes out to candidates is through, you know, these kind of communication, the background verification is pending, the reminders that go out and how you take them through this entire onboarding process really uh, projects the culture of the organization as well. So for that reason, we have made this entirely customizable, the communication that go out. So in case it's like an overdue note or it's a HR note and you want to customize your logo or you don't want to customize your logo, all of these minute details can be um, customized on the Spring Verify emails that go out as reminders and as notifications to candidates. So this is also another great feature that you can use uh, in Spring Verify. So this is everything about Spring Verify. And let's go back to our deck. So that's how you automate a background verification and manage large volume hiring by uh, you know, choosing a service provider that is able to give you as many less steps as possible for you to get done with background verification. And in Spring Verify, if you noticed and went through the steps, you only have to add candidate and you, you are able to automate everything else. You can ask candidate for consent. You can ask candidate to fill out the BGV form. And Spring Verify does all the reminders and notifications and everything else for you and only comes to you in case there are insufficiencies or, um, you know, um, there are cases where candidates are not responding. Uh, only then HRs are, you know, requested to get involved. Otherwise, there literally is no reason why you need to be even involved in the background verification process when it comes to Spring Verify. So this is how you can automate and um, manage large volume hiring. And uh, through Spring Verify, I've been able to explain, I guess, a little bit of how you can do this. So you can plan it accordingly and you can choose your goals and select the right service provider for you. So moving on to the next, uh, we're going to talk about creating a positive candidate experience during background verification. I'm happy to know most of you think that it's important. 
and uh, for the ones who don't think it's important um, this is the single biggest reason why you should consider candidate experience because uh, once a candidate has said yes from then onwards every move that a company makes the candidate is watching carefully they want to they're already skeptical you know when they're joining a new organization whether uh, this organization culture is good you know how uh, how empathetic they are and how polite they are how understanding they are when certain things go wrong and um, you know so they're watching you very carefully so background verification is the very first step or the very first um, process that they go through while onboarding with a company and when you create a positive experience for a for a candidate uh, through background verification uh, you start demonstrating from day one to them that they that your organization is organized they are uh, timely and you follow processes and you make it easy for the candidate to be able to go through these um, things in a simple manner so which is why this is why candidate experience is important during background verification because it helps you set the tone for them that uh, you've chosen the right service provider because candidate matters to you so that's my single argument for why this is important let's see some of the ways you can create um, a positive experience so background verification is a first step like i mentioned so you customize communication to demonstrate company culture uh, this i did take you through the feature that we have in uh, spring verify where you can customize the logo you can customize the messages you can even move away from the you know traditional um, formal communication and maybe if your company culture is more informal and stuff you can bring in that kind of a language in here so it depends on how you want to say things so uh, you customize communication you can um, be transparent about your policies and data security i've seen you know uh, a lot of times when companies are transparent on why they're collecting this information what happens with it how long are they going to retain it when you share these kind of things you make the candidate feel like they're important like um, you know they really matter their data security matters and what they think about the organization matters so be transparent about your policies and uh, their data security creating a user friendly platform um, why this is important is because first of all background verification is something that you know uh, makes some of them take a step back um, they are skeptical why you want to verify how you going to verify what all will you verify uh, what happens uh, if um, you know there is a discrepancy uh, by by discrepancy i mean that there is no match in what they're seeing and what data has been collected through the sources so uh, creating a user friendly platform where you know they get information and answers to everything and they're able to go through this process very very smoothly is important because it builds confidence for them as well that you know it's it's not a very big deal it's okay and it's it's a very simple process so which is why this is important timely process this again just shows that as an organization from day one that you do things as you meant you know precisely say so timely process is also important so these little very simple factors um, contribute to creating a positive candidate experience and with that we have come to the end of all the slides and um, i'll start taking the questions now yeah before that let's go through this poll um, if you are using a background verification service provider are you happy or is it just fine i see most of you say it's just fine great meanwhile i'll go through the questions we have how important is data retention clause with a bgv vendor while signing the agreement for data security purposes so um data retention clause um i think this is part of the agreement when you um the initial um agreement when you sign with a service provider i think it's also very very uh, it's kind of mandatory it's also mandatory to inform the um 
you know, candidate exactly how long you'll be retaining their data and for what you would be retaining the data. So it's a very, very important clause uh, to be mentioned for the clarity of yourself, for the clarity of the service provider and for the candidate. So should it ideally be done in-house or through a service provider? So Bharvi Patel for this question, um, the simple answer is that you know, uh, a PAN card check is done through the NSDL or income tax department. A voter ID check is done through the election commissioner, commission of India. So uh, a background verification service provider has multiple tie-ups with these government organizations where they're able to accurately verify this data. And it all happens through APIs. So I'm sure when you do it in-house, you are not able to get the exact accurate information exactly if this person is identifying themselves um, the way they're saying it. So, which is why um, I would definitely say a service provider is better. Um, so, you should totally go for that. Some companies insist on providing reference from the previous reporting manager. Provides bad feedback. Should we rely on his or her feedback and reject the candidate? Um, I think, uh, so we've, I think there is, a, we had a discussion internally on this topic and uh, it's, you know, the simple way of approaching this is when there is bad feedback and you know exactly, you know, what information um, they shared and why they said the candidate was bad. One way of approaching this is to ask them uh, the explanation of why the feedback is bad. And I'm sure candidate has something to say on this front. Uh, in, you know, but if it's, if the feedback is in certain way that, you know, it's non-acceptable, then of course um, you can take a call to reject the candidate. But if you think it's not a very, very satisfying answer, then you can always discuss with the candidate and understand what caused this kind of feedback to come in. Can you shed some light on BGV process in the US? What are the kinds of mandates involved? I think this is another, um, you know, this is for another day um, for US or somebody from my team can help you with it, Duty. Uh, you can share your details and my teammate Sakib is actually on this call. He can take you through the process if required. So how good do you feel Spring Verify is compared to other BGV service providers? Coming from Spring Verify, I'd say it's the best um, because I have seen some of the other competitors as well. But I think our platform and the kind of customer service we have is the best. And um, I, I constantly speak with customers every now and then. And the single biggest feedback I've received from them is even if things go wrong, the customer support is so available and is able to fix things within 24 hours or 48 hours or as early as possible. So in those terms, I'd say there is no service provider with no issues at all. But it's all about how they approach and deal with these problems. And I, I think Spring Verify does it the best. So I would say Spring Verify is the best and you should go for it. <laughs> is this a free platform? Uh, no, it's not a free platform. Um, there is, um, the checks cannot be done for free. So yeah, you, you can take like a demo and understand how the pricing is if you're interested. We are doing work from home. How do BGV for existing employees? whether they are moonlighting or not. So uh, one way of doing this is to do a UAN check where you can check the PF, um, PF details of uh, employees to understand whether they have two different PF accounts, whether they are getting PFs from two different companies. That's one way to check it. So if you want to do this check, you should select the UAN check for sure. I think I've answered everything. Great. Um, is is there any other question I'm missing? Pratha, there are some questions in the chat as well. You can take them. Yeah, I'll I'll just take a look at that. Mm, what do you suggest for company founders and employees self BGV check well in advance from investors' point of view? Uh, if it's if it's necessary, then um, there is an option to do it yourself as well. So I think you should go for it. I am not sure exactly in what point of view you're asking this question. Uh, will that be valid if initiated from startup or founders? Uh, there is an option for um, 
doing your own check, self checks. Um, you can even uh, check with one of the Spring Verify uh, person. Sakib can help you with this information. There is an option to check yourself and have a report ready. So, and it is valid, yes, if it comes from um, a background verification service provider, um, then it is valid. So the report holds holds good if you have your own verification, yes. Okay, so does it cover all countries or these are select few countries? Uh, this is a very, does this question have something else? Abash, any other questions that I'm missing? Yeah, uh, Sakib, would you like to, uh, what you have already posted in the chat, but some people might not have probably read that. Would you like to repeat yourself, Sakib, about the... Uh, full BGV services in India and USA, but two checks can be done in most of the countries. Just a little explanation will help. We don't need your video, sure. that's okay, yeah. Sure, all right, thank you so much. So yeah, uh, one of the participant has asked whether we do international verification too. So complete BGV solution we do in two countries, India as well as USA. But for the employment verification as well as education, we do international check for the all the candidates of India. So if they have any international history, we can do global database check for them, which involves uh, verification of any criminal history or any uh, terrorist relations or any politics related or something like that. Those history can be fetched from that. And which country, countries can we perform? Education, sorry, education as well as employment. These two checks can be performed in most of the countries. Got it. There are some questions, Sakib, around the reference check as well. If you want to expand on that, what sort of reference checks do we do for the past work experience? Sure. So in the employment verification, there are two kinds of. One is employment, the basic one, which uh, which will be verified by connecting with the previous HR of the company. Second thing is the reference check. In that, we connect with the previous reporting manager or the team leader of the candidate. So in the employment verification, basic details will be verified. For example, date of joining, uh, tenure, then uh, compensation, then designation. These are the things. And in the reference check, the performance issues or the performance details, how was the candidate's performance? Is he or she eligible for rehire? Any behavioral integral issues? So these kind of behavioral questions uh, are answered. So how do we do it? We connect with the previous HR or previous reporting manager over the call and inform them that we are sending an email which has a certain questions which needs to be answered. So this is how it is done. If okay. you have any specific questions that needs to be asked, we can customize those after a review from our team. Yes, so I am also sharing a link in the chat. Uh, obviously, you know, there are some specific questions that we are getting. Does reference check cost extra? Yes, it does. How much does it cost? We can, you know, uh, you can get on a call. I have shared the link here. And uh, Sakib and other BGB experts uh, from our team will help you get those answers. Um, yeah, so I would say, you know, for most of your questions, uh, uh, folks uh, that you're asking that are very, very particular kind, uh, including cost, etc., because it depends on several factors. So we don't want to give, uh, I mean, there are standard checks that we do, which we can obviously talk about, but there are specific checks, uh, which, which the cost depends on several factors. So please do get in touch with us. I have shared the link here in the chat and uh, do reach out. We will take a few more questions because we've got seven more minutes. Uh, Shweta, do you want to take up if the past employer is already taken over or doesn't exist anymore? How will the employment check be handled? Um, I think uh, the way to approach this would be to check the employment before the last one, if um, that's available. Otherwise, uh, going through reference check is the only way to do it. Thank you. Do you have the UN check service? Yes, we do. Can we opt for that alone? Is it possible to do the UN check alone? Sakib? Yes, we can do that. Perfect. Yes, Angela, we can do the UN check alone as well. 
however we do recommend a basic background verification package for and that's the that's not just because of the fact that we are trying to sell our wares here it's because of the fact that it exists for a reason uh what, what does the basic check consist of can you uh, quickly tell us Shweta? um i you broke there a little Avash. can you repeat the question sure sure sorry I, I i was saying that you know we do recommend a basic background verification package for every single employee and not just because we are selling this package because it's sort of um, you know basic hygiene if you're hiring any candidate so what would the basic package consist of because i see there are so many people who are DIYers, right? They are doing these verifications themselves. So just for their understanding, what would be the basic uh, set uh, of checks? The basic, pack the basic packages um, that we often see and that are necessary are ID, education, employment check, um, address check. Uh, the ID address is kind of the most basic. Employment and education as well is something that um, gets added to this. Cool. Uh, Sakib, one last question uh, uh, we will ask you is uh, if you can get, uh, you know, uh, some idea on, because there are two, two or three people that have asked about a basic uh, tat that you have for your, uh, you know, ID check, employment check, uh, education check, etc. Just a basic idea uh, people want, I guess. Sure, sure, Abash. So the TAD uh, is different for every check. For example, for ID verification and court record verification or the criminal history, these are instant checks. It's an API call. Still, uh, since we do a QC check as well, quality check after the checks has been done, so we, we take a day of day time for the ID verification and a two day time for the court record verification. And for the employment, education, as well as address, so the whole, uh, it is 7 to 14 working days within which all the checks will be provided to you. Perfect. Thanks. That makes sense, Akib. And also, uh, I do want to point this out. Many of you have to understand that if you're looking for any sort of compliance for your organization, right, whether it is an ISO, ISO uh, certification or a SOC 2 compliance, big background verification becomes a basic thing that you have to have in place to even get started with the process of applying for a SOC to compliance or a ISO certification. So from that perspective also, it's better that you start at the beginning stages of your organization. I know and I understand that, you know, when you are 20 employees, 30 employees, it might feel like, you know, I don't need to background verify. But when you are 200 employees, you will have, you will wish that you started sooner. And, uh, you know, you you will wish that the background verification process was in place from day one. So that is my personal recommendation because, um, uh, you know, that is something that we also sort of faced five, six years ago uh, when we applied for our ISO certification. By the way, uh, Spring Verify has all these certifications, right? So you are in good hands. Shweta, any closing thoughts? I think we can, um, we have answered most of the questions and uh, yeah, Rajeshree's question I answered just now. Uh, There's one more question. Yes, please, Priyanka. please, Sakit. Yeah. yeah, so Priyanka asked how to reach their previous company, HR, if their email or contact info isn't mentioned in their data. So Priyanka, uh, while we do background verification, we don't mandate the candidates to give the contact details of the previous employer. So it is an optional field, right? So we have our own database as well as a separate team who works on getting the contact details of previous employer. So candidates can completely skip them. The reason being is, if we force the candidate to give the contact details of previous employer, they will end up giving the contact details of their colleagues whom, whom they have good relations with. That will create an unnecessary mess. As I said, we have our own database. So there's uh, no mandate that the candidate has to provide, candidate or the employer has to provide the contact details of previous employer. Another reason why you should be working with a background, uh, established background service provider and not rely on your own uh, skills. Cool. Uh, Shweta, I think uh, we have two more minutes. I think we have answered most of the questions. Uh, good to yes. see that we have around 70% retention till the end of the session. So your closing thoughts. Yes. Um, my closing thoughts are just that, um, uh, you know, we have understood uh, the most fundamentals of background verification and why it's important. Um, and um, just 70% uh, of you are doing it yourself. 
but the only closing thought here is that you should um, have a service provider to verify information more accurately for you. And um, any more questions on the pricing or you know the TAT and everything, the Spring Verify team is ready to help you. So anything you need, and you can you can even um, I'll send you an email uh, with the ebook, and uh, the ebook contains. Uh, much more in-depth information about the basics of background verification, why it's important, and um, some more ways of making it more effective in your organization. And you will also receive the webinar recording um, and also the deck that I presented today. You will get all of this in your email um, by today. Uh, 